Now the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Let us pray. Let the word of my mouth and let the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Use me, O oh God. Let your blessing come down as I give the word that you have given to me. Fill the house with your glory. Thank you, Lord, for this moment. Amen. Amen. I give thanks and praise to the leader of this house, Reverend Tisha Branch, who is not here today, but I know she will be listening. And I thank all of you who come into the house of God to listen to this sermon, which I will try my best to deliver. Listen, just go. The Lord said to Abraham, to go from your country, from your people, your father's household, to the land I will show you. In order for you to go, you have to listen. In order for you to obey and trust, you have to listen. And in order for you to have faith, you have to listen. God called Abraham, God calling, God calling Abraham take us out of our comfort zone, God call always take us out of our comfort zone. God call take us out of our culture. God call take us out from where we were born. And God call also take us away from family and friends. God calling comes before his reward. So his calling to just go, take trust. His calling, take great or childlike faith. And his calling, take obedience before he revealed his reward. God reward is never on an individual basis. As in verse two, God said to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation. One man cannot be a great nation. One man cannot be a great nation. Let us look at verse two and three. He said, I will make you a great nation. I will make you great. I will make your name great. I will bless you and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curse you, I will curse. In other words, God was saying to Abraham, you may be 75 years old, but in your loins is the Messiah. Of course, Abraham did not have a clue. He just go. He did not know at the time that in his loin, the Messiah will come. 
Anyone, he, this is, this is, listen, li listen, people of God. Listen to what God said to Abraham. He said, anyone who curse you, anyone who disrespect you, I will curse. You see, God is a fierce protector Amen. of those who put their trust in him. He is a fierce protector. According to Haggai 2 and 6, he said, I will move heaven and earth for you. Just go. God will move heaven and earth for you. Just go. How many of us will leave everything you know and just go without questioning? I know I won't. The type of person I am, I won't. But Abraham did. Abraham did. In verse 4, we see the obedient and we also see God mercy. We see Abraham humanity by him asking Lot, his nephew, and some of his position. Remember, God said to Abraham, go from your country and your family, your father's household. But we are going to see God mercy. God mercy, only God know who you are. Because he knew this was not the first time that Abraham slipped up. By taking his nephew Lot, he did it before. We are reminded in Acts 7, verse 2 to 4, it reminds us that God said to Abraham, leave your country. Abraham chose to take his father on that journey, and he ended up at Haran. He went at Haran. So this was Abraham's second chance. God did not alter his promise or even confront Abraham, what a wise man. But, but, but we can't run, outrun God's love. We can't outrun God's love. Our action may cause delay, but he loved us anyway. When we just go, it comes with an answer. He ain't just love us, he love us anyway, but we have to obey and we have to follow, we have to just go. Yes. It's good to know that, not, it's good to know that because you slip up, you have a moment of weakness. You don't have to be perfect. Your faith don't have to be perfect for God to honor you. Many of us stop at Heron. Many of us turn back. Many of us forsook the call. We hold that these are moments of weakness. But the time came when we, we decide, we hear, that we listen again. Did he send me to go? I got to go. And he removed the distraction that was holding him back. So he was able to go. He was able to go. Abraham heard at the time in verse 2. We are going back to verse 2. Because it is important for us to go back and listen to the word of God. So you get a full understanding Abraham heard at the time in verse 2. What he heard, it was repeated seven times. And the word that Abraham heard that was repeated seven times from the measure of faith that he had, we see a childlike faith. We see a supernatural kind of faith from 
start emerging from Abraham obedient. Amen. That word, I will. Amen. From that word, we see a difference in Abraham. The supernatural faith, the, uh, the small amount of faith that he had, we see a different type of faith start emerging out of Abraham. In verse 7 and 8, after all this traveling, not knowing where he was going, and never asked, never questioned, God finally showed up. God finally appeared with an encouraging word. Don't we all need an encouragement from God? Yes. And when he show up, how excited we get. Amen. I thought you forgot me. You sent me on this journey, and here I am by myself. So God, I thank you just to show up. Yes. Which I believe was music to Abraham ears. God would always encourage us on the journey. God said to Abraham, to your offspring, I will give you this land. Hold up now. Hold up now. To your offspring. This is a different thing he said when he told him to go to the land. But now he, he said something else now. He said to Abraham when he show up this time, he said to your offspring, I will give you this land. And we as Bible studies, we as Bible believing church, we know that land was Canaan. Yes, yes, yes. Here, we see Abraham coming from, a, from an idol worshiper yes. to understand the power of God's words. Yes, yes. When he said to your offspring, <laughs> when, when God said to your offspring, I will. God, Abraham, built an altar to the Lord, which began an intimacy. When he built an altar to God the very first time, when he heard that word, the word is to your offspring. To your offspring, Abraham built an altar. A relationship merged. A friendship began. An intimacy began. He got a different feeling. There was a different feeling in Abraham's soul when he heard that word. To your offspring. This intimacy between him and God, he built on God's word. He built on God's word. Abraham did not get distracted. He didn't get overwhelmed. He did not get comfortable, nor righteous, but thinking about himself. Instead, he built an altar. He built an altar. He built an altar. He built an altar to show submission. He built an altar to show respect. He built an altar to worship God. He built an altar to give thanks based on the word. Sense of God. This is a man who have not he wasn't a God worshiper. He was not worshiping God at all. He was an idol worshiper. And when that intimacy starts, he said, hey, hey, I got to get on board. He was already on board, but there was a big shift. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It was a big shift. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Abraham Continue building altar to God. Wherever God appeared to him, while he, the Abraham, pitched tent. Tent, a temporary dwelling. You can move it from here to there. So he, he, he pitched tent for himself. But he built an altar. 
he built a permanent altar after which as a reminder the altar is a reminder when he leave that place the altar is still there that everyone who visits they see, they could hear, they could understand. Who knows? They could hear the voice of God right there next to that altar or in that altar. Hmm. He built a permanent altar reserved as a reminder of God's goodness. Ah, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, when you listened, when you trust God, when you obey God, when you go, when, you, when God deliver you, when God sets you free, we all should build an altar. We all should bring an altar. We all should bring back to the altar of God. We all should lift up our voices to God. We all should say like Abraham, thank you, Lord. It has been good. What I didn't have yesterday, you provide for me today. I left you. You told me to leave my land with, with nothing, just my, my wife and a, and, a, and a boy who I didn't was supposed to bring with me. But here I am now in your presence. Here I am now, more than what I, I had expected. Build an altar. Give him the sacrifice of praise. You come into the house of God, open up your mouth and give God thanks and praise. That's what you do. You build an altar. You build an altar. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Like Abraham in the gospel lesson. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Like Abraham, Jesus called Matthew a tax collector. We all hate those tax collectors. We don't like them at all. But God is good. <laughs> he called the tax collector out of his comfort zone to follow him. <laughs> Matthew got up and followed Jesus. No question asked. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it comes. He got up, a tax collector who was doing his thing. He was robbing people just like, just like, uh, just like Abraham. He was a, 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 a idol worshiper and he was comfortable doing that. He was an idol worshiper. But here comes the tax man. He followed Jesus. Uh, while the Pharisees, the Holy Church folks, me and you, who think Jesus should only speak to us, Jesus should only show up to us, we are so holier than thou. So when Jesus called the tax collector, they start mourning, they start grumbling, grumbling. Why is he mixing? Why is he going into that house? Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus should only speak to me. He should only speak to us. Uh, he should only dine with us. Them, the church folks, the church goers, not, not the low life person, not the beggar. This is how we think sometimes. We as church folks, Oh, hallelujah. Oh, clean us house. Clean us today, oh God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The tax collector and an idol worshiper, like they know, the tax collector, by just going, by just going, he became a healthy person. While, we, while they remain, while we the church folks, while we the church go, while, while we still remain, we are stuck in our uncertainty. We are stuck in our unhealthy ways. We are stuck thinking about others. We are stuck not looking at the broader picture, not looking to go, not focusing on what God is leading us to. But the tax collector, Amen. but the tax collector Amen. and the idol worshiper they heard the call, mm, yes, yes. and they go. Yep, yep. Mm, 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 mm. Do we hear God's calling us today to just go? Do we hear God calling us today to just go, to follow him today? Yes, brothers and sisters, we must create 
in our life. We must create space in our life. The world and all that we do, we get so caught up that we miss hearing God. So we am encouraging you today to create space in our life, to create space that we can follow, to create place, place that we can go. In conclusion, we see from these two passages, from one man obedient, provision was made to all. Amen. From one man obedient, provision was made for all people. Amen. We have a savior. Yes. We are being set free. Yes. We have salvation. Yes. He came to do for those who are lost. Yes. When God call and you listen and then go, even if we might not know the reward, even if we stumble, just go. Oh, man, yes. Trust God. We get to see when we go, we get to see and experience the opportunities and understand how vast and how wide and big is the heart of the God that we serve. Amen. Just go. Amen. Amen. Amen.